A cordial greeting? Today is Saturday, May 18, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I would like to provide an update on the two disturbances we are monitoring in the eastern Pacific region, which have a low probability of development over the next few days. Then, I would like to talk about a trough system that will be developing over regions of the central and northeastern Caribbean starting in the middle of next week. The development of a low-pressure system is anticipated, which should be moving over the region of Haiti, the Dominican Republic, or Puerto Rico starting Tuesday and Wednesday, potentially causing a significant rain event for the region. In the second part of the video, I will discuss the chances of cyclonic development, if any, and what the projected effects are expected to be across these areas of the Central and Northeastern Caribbean. Returning to the Eastern Pacific region, you know that we are monitoring two low-pressure systems located quite far south of the Mexico region. Both disturbances currently have a low probability of cyclonic development. Projections from global models have dramatically decreased the chances of development in this area. Therefore, it is very likely that the probabilities of development will continue to decrease over the next few days. Regardless of whether any cyclonic development occurs, the projections also indicate that they are expected to maintain a west-northwest trajectory, staying away from the Mexican coast and the Central American region. This is the projection from the European model, where only one of them develops into a tropical cyclone. Therefore, the chances of development according to the European model are extremely low at the moment. Additionally, the GFS ensemble model shows that only two to three members develop a tropical cyclone. This is a marked difference compared to what we had in previous days. Hence, the probabilities of development continue to decrease according to the projection of the American model ensemble. Note that it maintains a trajectory far from the Mexico and Central America region, where the effects, if any, associated with these disturbances will be minimal. Now, I would like to talk about the Caribbean Sea region, where we anticipate the development of a trough system and a low pressure just south of the Dominican Republic that will be moving northeast between Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. I wanted to start this part of the video by showing the sea surface temperature anomalies, where we can see that in the Caribbean Sea region, temperatures continue to be very hot and above normal. We're talking about 1 to 3 degrees Celsius above normal. We know that the Caribbean Sea region has a lot of energy available for the formation of tropical cyclones this year, which is quite concerning. When we look at the next chart, we can see that currently, the Caribbean Sea region has sea surface temperatures exceeding 29 degrees Celsius. In fact, it is the hottest it has been in the last 30 years. This value far exceeds what we saw in the year 2023, which turned out to be the hottest year on record for the Caribbean Sea. So, as I have indicated over the past few months, it is possible that this trend will lead us to record values during the months of September and October. To understand the seriousness of the matter, the temperatures in the Caribbean Sea currently exceed what is normal during the peak of the year, which usually occurs during the month of September. The magnitude of this event is extreme, and this should have significant consequences for the Caribbean region, including quite strong rain events expected this summer. In fact, these temperatures may be influencing the forecast for the trough system that will move through the central and northeastern Caribbean region, as we saw a few weeks ago when significant flooding was reported in Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. In this image, we can see the projection of the GFS model, where between Wednesday and Thursday there is an amplification of the trough at high levels of the atmosphere. The most active part of precipitation and vorticity is just to the right of the trough axis, over Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and regions of Puerto Rico. This is why, at the moment, it appears that this will be the area receiving the most rain from Wednesday to Saturday of next week. Let's look at the projections from the global models. We'll start with the GFS model. Here you can see that during the night hours of Wednesday, it develops a low-pressure system associated with this trough just south of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. In the latest run, it shows a fairly well-defined low-pressure system, raising suspicions about whether this area could have some type of cyclonic development. For now, the GFS only has a low-pressure system associated with a trough, so it is not a tropical system, and the chances of development seem extremely low at the moment. Later, I will explain the reasons for this forecast. Notice that between Thursday and Friday, that low-pressure system influenced by the trough will be moving over the Dominican Republic and Haiti, accompanied by a lot of atmospheric instability. South-southwest winds will move considerable moisture associated with the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea, increasing the risk of heavy rains. Eventually, the GFS model shows this low-pressure system moving over the waters of the North Atlantic without posing a significant threat to land areas or Bermuda. Regarding the potential for tropical cyclone development, you can see that the ensemble members of the GFS model in its latest run, none of them develop a tropical depression in this area. This is normal for the month of May, as it is very difficult to see development in the Caribbean Sea region. We also have the projection from the European model, which is quite similar to the American model. It shows a low-pressure system influenced by the trough developing between Jamaica and Haiti during the early hours of Wednesday, eventually moving over the Haiti and Dominican Republic region between Thursday and Friday. 
It should then move toward the open waters of the Atlantic. The European model also does not show the development of a tropical cyclone. In fact, none of the ensemble members of the European model develop a tropical depression related to this disturbance. Looking at the climatology for the last 10 days of May, there have been very few systems that have managed any type of cyclonic development, with the exception of two occasions where we did see the development of a tropical depression. This means that some type of low-pressure development cannot be ruled out, but the conditions at the moment are not favorable for cyclonic development. This event is associated with a trough system, which will make it difficult for the low-pressure system to transition into a tropical system. Additionally, note that during the next week, an unfavorable phase for cyclonic formation of the Madden-Julian Oscillation is expected to be located over the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic. As we are out of season and under these conditions, it will be very difficult to have cyclonic development in the Atlantic over the next 10 days. Now let's talk about what effects are expected in the Caribbean region, specifically in the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Model projections are suggesting the development of a trough system over the central and northeastern Caribbean region from Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. This trough, forming in the Caribbean Sea region, could develop a low-pressure system south of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Additionally, as you can see in this GFS model projection, which is from the simulated Doppler radar, significant rainfall is anticipated to impact the central and northeastern Caribbean region starting Wednesday of next week. This rain event could extend until Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. According to the GFS model projections, in terms of accumulated rainfall, over 175 mm of rain is anticipated to fall over regions of the Dominican Republic, especially towards the end of next week. This could result in a significant flooding event. Note that the European model also shows rain for the regions of Haiti and Jamaica, where up to 300 mm of rain could fall by the end of next week. In the following animation, you can see the anticipated progression of rainfall for the Dominican Republic region from Tuesday of next week, with the most intense precipitation expected between Wednesday and Thursday, potentially causing flooding in the central eastern Dominican Republic and over Puerto Rico. According to the GFS, we are talking about rainfall maxima that can exceed 200 mm, with some regions potentially receiving over 300 mm, but the final amounts of rain will depend on how these projections adjust. For Puerto Rico, between 1 to 2 inches of rain is currently anticipated, so it seems that the most active part will be over the Dominican Republic, but this forecast may change over the coming days. We all need to stay attentive to the projections. In the case of the European model over the Dominican Republic, it shows accumulated rainfall ranging from 60 to 75 millimeters, a much smaller magnitude compared to the American model. Therefore, there is still some uncertainty. We know that a significant rain event is approaching, but there is still uncertainty about the amount of rainfall we could receive. The German model is quite aggressive as well, showing between 100 to 150 millimeters of rain affecting the Dominican Republic between Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of next week. This trough and low pressure system will also come with some wind gusts or gusts of wind between 60 to 70 kilometers per hour, which could affect some coastal and eastern regions of the Dominican Republic. Keep in mind that strong breezes are expected. This is good evidence that, at the moment, we do not anticipate the development of a tropical depression. Here, we get a bit closer to these projections, specifically seeing some wind gusts between Thursday and Friday, moving over the Mona Passage and the Eastern Dominican Republic. Well, that's all for this forecast. I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the red button below the video that says subscribe. Then, click the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. Well, with this, I say goodbye. I hope everyone has an excellent day. During this weekend, I will continue recording new videos to talk about the hurricane season projections and discuss the very hot temperature anomalies prevailing in the Atlantic region. See you later.